Immediately after the launching of U.S. satellites number one and number three into outer space, newspaper headlines across the country told the world of a new radiation hazard from the sun, far more deadly than cosmic rays. An obscure scientist, my colleague, Dr. Gilbert McKenna, had already discovered this danger from the sun. This is his story. They're bringing him in now. The radiation case? Yes. Oh, I don't know if I like that. Oh, this is a bad one. This guy's been soaked with radiation. I'd better call Dr. Stern. He's been out since we picked him up. Page Dr. Stern, please, for admitting room. Emergency. Let's get back to the wagon, Bob. Yeah. Did you get his name? Yes, Dr. Gilbert McKenna. Dr. McKell, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. That's all right, Doctor. You're a busy man. Miss Lansing, this is Dr. Stern. How do you do, Doctor? You worked with McKenna, too, Miss Lansing? Yes. Yes, we're all on a dog stop project together. Miss Lansing is Dr. McKenna's laboratory assistant. Is it going to be all right, Doctor? I'm afraid it's too soon to say definitely, Miss Lansing. He seems to be improving, although... Although what? Miss Lansing, I asked you and Dr. McKell to come here because there are some very puzzling factors in this case. What do you mean? Before we go into that, I would like to know exactly what happened out there. Sit down, please. We're doing some work on newly developed radioactive isotopes. We use all the usual precautions, lead screens, remote control handling device, you know what I mean. All radioactive material is kept in a lead vault. And when we want a particular isotope, we have a little electric train, a, a toy train like you give your kids for Christmas, which we back into the vault. And we load on the isotope by means of remote-controlled arms and run the train out of the port again. I see. Well, this morning something happened. Dr. McKenna had just run the train out of the vault when... And you were there, aren't you? You were telling me. Well, the train always stops behind a large lead screen before we unload it. Gil, uh, Dr. McKenna had gone behind the screen to take the container off the train and... Well, it must have fallen to the floor. I was on the other side of the room, and I heard a noise, and he called out to me there had been an accident. Well, when those things happen, we never under any circumstances deviate from regular procedure. There's an alarm button in the room, which alerts the whole building, including the emergency station. Miss Lansing sounded the alarm and then left the room. That's also part of the procedure. Were you exposed to the radiation? No, I was on the other side of the screen. The odd part is that when the emergency crew went in to investigate, they found Dr. McKenna unconscious. Now, generally speaking, overexposure to radiation doesn't cause loss of consciousness. How long was he exposed? Ooh, five or six minutes. It takes the emergency crew that long to put on their radiation suits before they went in. He was exposed all this time? Yes. I just don't understand it. What don't you understand? Dr. McKell. You've told me that Dr. McKenna was exposed to highly radioactive material for five or six minutes. Yet after he recovered from the initial shock, he showed absolutely no residual effects, whatever. No burns, no radiation effects, nothing. It is unusual. Then he's all right. Well, we hope so. Hope so? But you said he showed no reaction. So far, he hasn't. It seems inconceivable that he could be exposed for that length of time without any effect. Well, we can only wait and see. Please excuse me. And may I suggest you check with me in a day or so? I feel we should keep him here under observation for a few days. Thank you very much, Doctor. You've been very kind. Yes, thank you so much. You'll let us know if anything... By all means. I'll be watching him very closely. Goodbye. Bye, Doctor. What effect does he expect, Dr. McGill? He doesn't know. In fact, nobody does. It's a new isotope that never existed in nature before. What its effect will be is anybody's guess. If Gil would only listen I when... I don't know what you're thinking. But it's not Gil's fault. I saw I looked this morning in. He just had a headache. You mean a hangover? The equipment must have been at fault. Gil's always careful when he handles isotopes. Careful? Hmm. How can anybody be careful with a hangover? He didn't have a hangover. I was with him all morning. He had a headache. Oh, 
You see a girl through rose-colored glasses. I've known him since he was a first-year science major. In fact, I was the one who recommended him for this project. And I've warned him for the last time. Whiskey and soda mix not whiskey and science. We'd better discuss this some other time. All right, we'll discuss it when he gives over this. Come on, take you off. strong enough to shake down the very walls of this hospital, but uh, as soon as you entered the room, <laughs> your beauty so overwhelmed me that I feel as weak as a day-old kitten. Time for cocktails? Oh, I asked you a serious question. I'd like a serious answer. All right. feel very well, thank you. But I am getting a little tired of being treated like a specimen under a microscope, the whole hospital staff standing around waiting for me to develop some new symptom. You'll be able to go home in a couple of days. Good. Right now, we're going to take you out for an airing. Oh, fine. Mm -hmm. Up to the solarium roof where you'll get plenty of sun. Good, let's go. Oh, not so fast. We'd like it a wheelchair. A wheelchair? That's right, that's doctor's order. I'll be back in a minute. back for you in about 45 minutes. All right. Pardon me, young man. Is there perchance a magazine on the table called Sickness and Health? Uh, let's see. I hope you won't think me rude if I don't talk to you for a while. I'm anxious to get at my article. Here it is. Young man, I hate to bother you again, but... Oh! Oh, oh, oh. No! It can't be! Lansing. Dr. McKenna has fallen victim to one of the strangest and most baffling medical phenomena I've ever seen, or even heard of. Let me try to explain what I mean. These are basic classes of beings in the animal kingdom, from the little one-celled amoeba up here in the corner, through the intermediate classes, and right down to man. As you know, all life on Earth began with the one-celled animal. And biologists estimate that it took several million years to evolve a form as complex as the mammals, as man. But here's something very interesting. During the nine-month period from conception to birth, the human being goes through this same evolutionary process in the womb. In other words, he first begins as a one-celled animal. Then he becomes a collection of cells. 
He starts to assume a definite form as the cells begin to take on specialized functions. He next passes through a state when he is similar in structure to a fish, and then from an amphibian to a reptile. Finally, he passes into the mammal state where he begins to take on more and more the appearance of a human being. Now, we know that each individual goes through this evolutionary process before he is born. And it's not inconceivable that this process could be reversed. Reversed? It's possible. You mean a human being could evolve backward through time to become some sort of prehistoric creature? That's fantastic. So, Doctor, are the isotopes you're developing in your atomic laboratories? I want to show you some slides which may help you to understand what's happened to Dr. McKenna. Or Dr. Bacall, could you get that blind for me, please? Recently, some biochemists conducted a series of experiments on insects to see what effect certain forms of radiation have on living cells. I want to show you a red ant which had been exposed to intense amounts of X-ray. This is a common house fly, after exposure to gamma rays. This one used to be a grasshopper. Well, I guess you get the idea. Hey, Dr. Bacall, could you get that blind for me, please? Not very good, I'm afraid. The radiation from that isotope caused a peculiar and subtle change in the cells of Dr. McKenna's body. Just as other radiation had done to the cells in the bodies of those insects, his whole appearance has changed into something scaly, almost lizard-like. Oh, no. But, Doctor, there was no hint of anything like this at first. No. A catalyst was needed to complete the reaction. The catalyst is sunlight. Sunlight? That's what happened the other afternoon. He was sitting in the sun when, gradually, the cells in his body reacted, and you know the rest. We were able to get him over that first attack simply by putting him in a dark room. Then he's all right now. As long as he stays out of the sun. What about artificial light? No trouble with that. The radiation spectrum of tungsten is quite different from that of sunlight. Doctor, how's he taking it? Psychologically, I mean. Not too well. He's retreated entirely into himself. It's difficult even to talk to him. He resigned from the project. I got a letter from him. He wanted to go off someplace by himself. Is he able to leave? I mean, is he well enough physically? Physically, yes. Except for this terrible sensitivity to sunlight. However, this goes beyond the physical. Dr. Stern, you don't mean that something's happened to his mind. A terrible thing has happened to him, Miss Lansing. Somehow he must learn to live with it. To do that, he'll need help. If he goes off by himself where he'll have neither friends nor medical care, well, there's no telling what could happen. But can't you keep him here? Not against his will.
water? No, thanks. All right. Say, how come the dark glasses at night? Well, I've been in the hospital. That's too bad. Hey, uh, where can I get some cigarettes? Uh, in the bar across the street. The pursuit of blood is a strange, compelling desire. Oh, you're me. You're not mine to hold. And I want the joy your lips inspire. My heart is bare. You know I care. Will you take my love or throw it away? I've just got the answer from Dr. Hoffman. He's agreed to come? Yes, and if anybody can help Gil, it's Dr. Jacob Hoffman. Do you think he can? He's the best man in the country on radiation poisoning. When will he be here? Day after tomorrow. Have you... have you heard from Gil? No, the telephone's disconnected. Why don't you drive out and see him? You think I should? I think you'd want to. Anyway, good news like this should be delivered personally. You're right. I'll drive out in the morning and see you. Darwin never even scratched the surface. How could he? Evolution backwards to the age of the reptile. Half human. Half lizard. And I'm the guinea pig to be locked up alone.
What do you have? Bourbon and water. Come on. 
to drive. Yeah, I like to drive fast. Kind of takes your mind off of unpleasant things. As good an excuse as any, I guess. <laughs> you want another drink? Don't tell me you've got a bottle in the glove compartment. Well, better than that. Here. Well, well, all the comforts of home. Yep, be they ever so humble. Well, I could use one. Thought we were going off the cliff. Here. No, no. Lots of room. Besides, this will steady your nerves. Thanks. Hmm? Here's to your good health. May you always have it. You're a strange guy. I am? Yeah. I can't figure out just why. You know, it's funny. Out of nowhere, you walked into a bar, bought me a drink, got into a fight. Now look where we are. Yeah. Where are we? I know where I am. Sitting out here in a car by the beach with a man I only met an hour ago. I guess that's not so good, is it? You're sorry you came? No. I like you. Do you think I'd come out here with you if I didn't? No, I guess not. Well, let's take a walk. Walk? Yeah, down by the water. It's a beautiful night. All right. Come on, I'll race you to the water. <laughs> Wait, I can't run any to you. Too bad at all. It's a perfect fit. Oh, but this wool blanket. What's the matter? Are you kidding? I've got practically nothing on under this. It scratches. Take it off. Oh, sure. I can see you're going to force me to be a gentleman and offer you my coat. But, uh, first you better have some of this. <laughs> Don't you think we've had enough? We've already fallen in the water once together. I'm sorry about what happened. Forget it. I think it's kind of fun. That is, if I don't get pneumonia. Don't worry, that they can cure. It's a common cold that still baffles the medical profession. That, among other things. Of course, I could take you home. Don't be silly. I can't go home like this. We'll have to stay here until my clothes dry out. You're so right. I could uh, use that coat now. Oh, all right. Trade you. Coat for the blanket. Come on now. Put it around my shoulders. Oh, all right.
Doing down here. Yeah, another attack. I've got two minutes for you, Gil. You remember Dr. Jacob Hoffman? Hoffman? Yes, you remember him. He and your father went to school together. Dr. Bakel knows him too. So what? Well, Dr. Hoffman's been studying radiation poisoning for a long time. He's been able to cure a lot of people. After you left, Dr. Bakel wrote him about you. We got a letter from him, and he's coming to help you. Don't you realize what this means? He may be able to cure you. It's no use, Anne. Gil! I'm beyond help, Anne. This thing I've got is different. Days I've been reading everything I could find. My case is different. It's not in any of the books. I can't be sure, Anne. But you can't stay locked up here for the rest of your life. What else can I do? Dr. Hoffman has offered to come here and examine you. You won't even have to leave the house. He'll be here this afternoon. I can drive him up to see you. Please, Gil. It won't do any good. Please, Gil. You can't just give up. You've got to at least see him. He's come all this distance. Oh, please, Anne, please, just let me alone. Let me alone, please. Don't you want to get well and live normally again? I... You don't know how it's been wondering about you, worrying and hoping. Please, Gil. If you don't care about yourself, at least consider the people who do.
You're not going to find out anything that way, Dr. Hoffman. My heart's all right. No, Gil, you must let us doctors play our games now, won't we? We are like actors, you know. We like to show off. It's all very well for you to joke about it. It's not very funny to me. I thought you were going to help me. I hope to, Gil. From what I know of your case, things are not as bad as you have feared. We analyzed the isotope you're working on, Gil. Dr. Hoffman thinks he may be able to cure you. Yeah, I think there's definite hope. Do, do you really mean it? Oh, I wouldn't mislead you about a thing like that. I can't tell you how much it would mean for me to get well, Dr. Hoffman. I, for weeks I've been locked up in this mausoleum, unable to go out any time except at night, afraid of the sun and these horrible attacks. I, I'll do anything, anything to get well. Anything? Yes, yes, anything. All right, then. After a few days of preliminary observation here at the house, we shall take you to my hospital back east. But, but how? I can't go out in the sun, not even for a little while. Oh, we'll make arrangements. But, meanwhile, you are not to leave this house, not under any circumstances. Not even at night? Not even at night. After what happened last evening, there's too much risk. No doubt you are aware that the transformation came this time after much shorter exposure to the sun than the first time. Yes, I, uh, I know. Now, this is because the skin gets more sensitive as time goes on. If there should be a next time, you might find that it takes only a very brief exposure to the sun to change you. You might also find that it takes much longer to change you back. So no more wandering at night, my boy, and no more drinking. We'll get to the hospital as soon as possible. Trudy, I... I don't want to see you outside. Well, come wait, on, man. I, let's go. Uh, wait a minute. Can't leave him here. The guy's done such a job on him that we can't send him home. Come on. Hey, 
Let's get out of here. Just hold on. Take him to a hospital, huh? He's been here all night. And what if he has? That's my business. And mine. <laughs> Why, you lousy Judy. We should have finished you off last night. All right, mister. Step outside. George, I'm like, I know what you're thinking, but nothing happened here last night. I just decided to bring him home instead of the hospital. Nothing wrong in that? No, of course not, Trudy. Nothing wrong with that and a lot of other things you do. Look, I can explain Shut it. Up. He can't go out in the daylight, George. His eyes... Knock it said... off. You're making a big mistake. Okay. Let's go. Not that way. Out the back. I'll talk to you later. Hey, wait a minute. Let's go. Can't we talk this over? Move. All right.
wonder if we should have called the police. He's been gone for so long. No, we must wait. That's all we can do. That must be Gil. No! <laughs> I couldn't help myself, Dr. Bagel. After it wasn't your fault, Gil, he forced you out with a gun. Nevertheless, I committed a murder. I murdered somebody. You've got to try to calm yourself. Look, Gil. We can prove it was self-defense. You don't seem to understand. No matter what we prove, it doesn't alter the fact that I wanted to kill him. I've devoted my life to science. And you see what's happened? What good has it done me? What chance have I got to fight? Why should I be the one? Can you answer me that? Why me? Why should I be the one picked up for this? Please tell me why! I never did anything. Did you see what happened? I said it. I said it. Paranoia. I'm not a psychiatrist, but. Under these circumstances, Dr. Gill is a scientist. Yeah, a good scientist, even bordering on a genius. But there's a very fine line there, and any little thing can push him over it. I'll go in. No, I can't. satisfied. He's made a nice clean break. He has. It's not what I would have wished. And he ran over one of my men in the process. Jacobs, call the state police and give him a full description. Right. And get an ambulance up here right away. He's a dangerous man. He's only dangerous because he is a sick man. Yeah, they all are. Oh, you don't understand. I understand he ran over one of my men. Well, I've got to get back to headquarters. Is this doctor mind if I go with you? That's all right. I'll get my medical case. You want to come? No. Nope. I got a triathlon chance. See if I can find it before they do. Let me go with you. No, I think you better come with me. If they bring him in by force, we might need all the help we can give him. He's right. And I don't stand much of a chance against the entire police force. Did they get him? No. No? Well, you know how 
how it is. A lot of people milling around. They didn't even know whose car it was until they checked the registration. But didn't they try to stop him? He wasn't there. Somebody said they saw him running away from the accident. I guess he wasn't even hurt. Well, get all the extra men in need and start setting up roadblocks around the city. He won't get far. Anything more happens. Well, there was another report on your friend. Well, let's see. He was first reported buying gas just about here. And then somebody saw him right here. The last report placed him just about here. Following those guys up. We should have had a report by now. Perhaps he managed to slip through your net. Not a chance. Besides, he wouldn't have fought in daylight. From what you told me, daylight's what causes these spells of his. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's only a matter of time. The whole city's been alerted. Extra, extra, read all about it. Extra, extra, read all about it. Thanks, son. Extra, extra, hey boy, read all so about too. it. Extra, extra, read all about it. Another night of fear and apprehension for all of us, unless the search can be done tomorrow. Hi, darling. Here, give me a kiss. Oh, it's going today. Hi, Abby. I like again to the King sisters. Hey, just between us, what's the latest on this? Well, all we know is that he's somewhere in the city. And he's really dangerous, huh? Homicidal? He's killed twice. He'll do it again. Mm. Well, we'll help all we can, but boy, you got a tough one on your hands. It's a big city. But we do know one thing. He's in a dark hole somewhere out of the sun. <laughs>
we can figure, he must be hiding somewhere in the central Los Angeles area. No, I doubt it. We blocked all the roads last night. He isn't likely to move about by daylight. But keep checking with us. That's right. Goodbye. Well, that jives with what you've told me, doesn't it? Yeah, he would have to stay inside during daylight hours. I can't bear to think of him out there alone. Hiding. So frightened. He's frightened. Everybody in town's frightened. They've locked themselves in their houses. You know, TV and radio is making a big deal out of this. Warning parents not to let the children go out alone until he's apprehended. Just how dangerous is he, Doctor? But you shouldn't be out here if you're sick, mister. You should go to a doctor. No, I... A doctor would make you well, and he wouldn't hurt you much. One time I went to a doctor. He stuck me with a needle. It didn't hurt much. I, I can't go to a doctor. I can't leave here. Why not? Because the sun's bad for me. Oh, no, the sun is good for you. One time I had a cold, and Mommy made me sit in the sun all day, and it made me well. And you should eat a lot, too. That's what Mommy says. Aren't you hungry? Hungry? Would you like me to bring you some cookies? I love cookies. Mommy always keeps them in the kitchen. I know where they are. Would you like me to bring you some? You do that for me? Yes. Then you want to help me? Yes. Then you mustn't tell anybody that I'm here. Not even Mommy? Not even Mommy. We've got to keep it a secret. Okay, I won't tell anybody. Hello, Mommy. Hi, dear. You shouldn't have gone out when I told you not to. What are you up to now? I just want some cookies. Oh, now, please. You know it's almost supper time. But I'm not going to eat them now. Well, then leave them alone. You can have them for dessert. Susie. What's gotten into you today? You're not usually this bad. I want some cookies. You can have some for dessert. I told you that. But I want some now. But you can't have them now. It's too close to supper. I want it. Oh, darling, come here. What's the matter? They're for my friend. What friend? My new friend. Your new friend? Who is this new friend of yours? But I can't tell. Oh, Susie, you don't expect me to believe that, do you? But it's true, it's true. He sat there all alone, and he's sick and hungry, and I promised to bring him some cookies. But where? I can't tell. It's a secret. Susie, you must tell me. No, I can't. Susie, listen to me carefully. Who is this new friend of yours? Is he a man? A big, grown-up man like your daddy? Susie, where is he? Where is he hiding? Susie, you've got to tell me. Where is he hiding? He's where? Where is he? The shack. The shack? No, Mommy, no. Oh, no, Mommy, no. Please hurry. Hello, but please. I think I know where that man is. Absolutely.
Don't cry, Anne. Perhaps you should cry. The rest of us can only hope that his life is not wasted. <laughs>